All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the 144,000. All praises and glory is due to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is his name, the true name of the Heavenly Father, and that's according to the ancient Hebrew. Bahasham means in the name, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the only begotten Son. The one that the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. His true name is Yahweh Shai. So when I begin these videos, I start by saying all praises and glory is due to the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash. Rekakwadash in the ancient Hebrew means Holy Spirit. And like I like to say, the Holy Spirit is the engine of this ministry. Just like a car cannot go anywhere without an engine. Well, the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot teach these scriptures correctly and accurately. You know, the Holy Spirit is a gift given to us from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Okay, and that's a, a pursuant to Ephesians 2 and 8. That scripture comes to mind. Also, what the Apostle Paul talked about as in spiritual gifts. As a matter of fact, let's go there real quick. Because that's very important. For you to do this ministry correctly, you have to be endowed with those spiritual gifts. Here's the scripture, 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Now, look at the subheading, the use of spiritual gifts. In the NLT side, it says spiritual gifts. So, it says uh, on the KJV side, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 1, now concerning spiritual gifts. So, the Apostle Paul talks about spiritual gifts. Brethren, I would have I would not have you ignorant. Now let's go to let's go to the uh, examples of spiritual gifts that the apostle Paul talks about. The seventh verse it says, "But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, every Israelite man that have been called, as in the hopeful elect that have been called into this knowledge, this truth." But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Let's read that in the NLT. A spiritual gift is given. See, a spiritual gift. So you have individuals in this ministry that have been given spiritual gifts. And one of those spiritual gifts is the ability to understand these scriptures. That's a spiritual gift. Then you have another gift, the ability to teach the scriptures. Those are gifts given to us by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, okay, so that we could do this work effectively. It says a spiritual, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other within the ministry, see? Now, it goes into some examples of the spiritual gifts, okay? Uh, the eighth verse, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. What does that mean? The word of wisdom meaning the understanding of these scriptures. That's what that's talking about. Okay? The understanding of these scriptures. Right? Uh, reading on, it says, To another, the word of knowledge. Again, the scriptures. By the same spirit. Right? To another, faith. That's a spiritual gift. By the same spirit. When it says by the same spirit, what is it talking about? The spirit of Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay? To another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy. Now, these are all different um, different offices in the ministry, okay? Gifts of healing, right? Uh, the word of knowledge, right? The word of wisdom, right? To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, the gift of prophecy. You're able to break down prophecy right? Using the scriptures, of course, to another discerning of spirits. And that's very important, especially when you're out on the street teaching. The ability to discern spirits, read spirits, right? Uh, reading on, it says, to another diverse kind of tongues, meaning different languages. You got brothers that can speak. You got brothers that are polyglots. Look up the term polyglot, P-O-L-Y-G-L-O-T, a polyglot, right? It says, to another the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, different languages, to another the interpretation of tongues, different languages. See? 
So these are all different offices in this ministry. All right. So you clearly see how important the Holy Spirit is. Okay. Now, what inspired me to do this video was uh, a comment that, you know, I had made at the camp uh, today, Saturday, earlier today. And um, it had to do with uh, Yahweh Shai being our mediator and the fact that you got some Israelites out there that think they're on the level to go directly to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right. They don't acknowledge Yahweh Shai like they should. Okay. You got to understand that you're, you're on no level to go to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And in reality, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh is not even dealing with you. The only one that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh is really dealing with is the mediator, which is Yahweh Shai. Okay. And you know what proves that? The fact that Yahweh Shai is the one that makes intercession for us. Okay. Because the Heavenly Father, he ain't trying to hear you, man. The only one he's hearing is Yahweh Shai. That's why we have a mediator. And I'm going to read it too. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. For there is one power, his name is Yahweh, and one mediator. Now, the fact that the Heavenly Father Yahweh has set up a mediator proves we're on no level to go directly to the Heavenly Father. That ain't happening. Okay? That is not happening. All right? The scriptures say there's one mediator. The scripture also say there's one intercessor. Okay? He maketh intercession for us. Okay? As a matter of fact, um, let me get that scripture. We're going to come back to the scripture because I'm, I'm kind of, I'm very anxious because I haven't looked it up yet. I'm very anxious to know what the Greek word is for intercession. Now, make sure I spell it right. And then, then we're going to, we're going to read it and look it up. Okay. Okay, the, uh, wow. Um, all right, let's go to the book of Romans, the 8th chapter. And we could start there, the 27th verse. Then we'll read down. I think it repeats the same word again in the 34th verse, if, if I, what I just saw is correct. Um, this is the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, the 27th verse. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he, the he is Yahweh Shai, maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of who? Yahweh. So Yahweh Shai is making intercession. Let's read uh, for us. Let's read the NLT. And the Father who knows all hearts, right? The Father is talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us and that's the spirit of Yahweh Shai, that is, pleads for us believers in harmony with Yahweh's own will. Now, let's look up the word intercession. And again, this is proof that we're not, we, we as Israelite men, we're, not, we're on no level to go directly to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Okay? Um, and you got some Israelites out there that don't, they don't um, extend, well, they don't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't give Yahweh Shai the, the due respect that he deserves. They really think they're on the level to go to the Heavenly Father Yahweh without really regarding Yahweh Shai. And, and that's going off. That is simply going off. You're, none of us Israelite men, none of us are on the level to go directly to the Heavenly Father without really, really acknowledging his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay. I dare say this, we worship the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by worshiping Yahweh Shai. You see, if we worship Yahweh Shai, right? If we worship Yahweh Shai, by default, we're worshiping the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. That's the way Yahweh Shai set it up. Okay, we, we, we said that at the camp. Uh, the angels in heaven bow before Yahweh Shai, okay? The angels in heaven bow before Yahweh Shai, so... Anyway, um, Romans, the 8th chapter, the 27th verse, I just read it. We're going to look up the word intercession. It says, he maketh intercession. So let's go to the Greek. 
Okay. Strong's G, 1793. Entug Hano. Entug Hano. Right, so Entug or Entug Hano, right? And it says, to light upon a person or a thing, fall in with, hit upon a person or a thing, to go or to meet a person, especially for the purpose of conversation, consultation, and supplication. Supplication, another word for supplication means to beg. So essentially, right, Yahweh Shai, he begs on our behalf to his father Yahweh. And like I said earlier, the heavenly father Yahweh is only, really right now, is only listening to Yahweh Shai. He's not listening to us. He's listening to Yahweh Shai. That's why Yahweh Shai makes intercession for us. He begs on our behalf. He begs the Heavenly Father on our behalf. Think about that. Okay, that's, look, this is the word that we're looking at. Intercession. We looked at the Greek word. Um, the Greek word there is entukano, entukano, right? Entukano, right? And it says, I like the number two definition, to go or to go to or meet a person, especially for the purpose of conversation. Now, you know, <clears throat> in the book of Revelation, it speaks about how Yahweh Shah is the one that took the prayers of the saints. Uh, let's quickly go. You know what? Um, let me hold this and we can, I'll use my, uh, my Apocrypha Bible for this one. We, we're going to go to, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to go to the book of Revelation to give you an example in Scripture of the definition we just read here. Okay, let's read it one more time. It says, now this is based upon the Greek word entukano, entukano for uh, intercession, right? Number two, to go to or meet a person, especially for the purpose of conversation, consultation, and supplication. So Yahweh Shai goes to the Father Yahweh on our behalf in the spirit world. And here's proof of that. Here's proof of that. When you go in the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter, and he takes our prayers to the Heavenly Father too. The word prayer means to beg. Okay? So he begs on our behalf. All right? And a lot of these Israelites, they, they don't acknowledge that, man. I'm telling you, a lot of these Israelites out, out here, these Israelite men of the different camps, they really don't understand what they're involved in. They really don't. Okay? It is right here. This is proof. This is in the spirit world. The Apostle Paul actually saw this vision in the spirit world. Okay? Or rather, he, he saw this vision. Let me say that again. He saw this vision of, of the spirit world. That's what I meant to say. The, did I say the Apostle Paul? I hope I didn't. The Apostle John. If I did, I correct myself. The Apostle John, right, on the island of Patmos, he saw this vision of the spirit world. He saw Yahweh Shai going on our behalf to the Heavenly Father Yahweh with the prayers that were prayed by the, by the saints that were on the planet Earth. Okay, let's read it. Revelation, the fifth chapter and the sixth verse. And I beheld. So this is a vision that the Apostle John is seeing on the island of Patmos, right? And he sees a vision. Uh, it reads, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, who's sitting on that throne, the heavenly father, Yahweh, right? Stood a lamb as it had been slain. Who's that lamb? Yahweh Shai is that lamb. That's another title for Yahweh Shai, the lamb, right? Even John the Baptist said that, lamb of God who take away the sin of the world, right? What world? The world of Israel. What God? The God Yahweh, right? That's his true name, right? Stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. Complete power, right? which are the seven spirits of the Heavenly Father sent forth into all the earth. And it would make sense that that would be angels. That's what the angels do, right? They go back and forth from the spirit world to the planet earth. Back and forth, back and forth, right? Even Jacob saw that it, when you read about Jacob's ladder, right? So the angels going back and forth, back and forth. Reading on, it says, And he came and took the book. What book? The, the book represents this Bible, Right? He came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, right? And th by the way, this is why we have the understanding of this book. It's through Yahweh Shai, right? Let's keep reading. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, right, which were angels, 
and four and twenty elders, which are also angels, fell down before the Lamb. So wait a minute, they worship the Lamb. The Lamb is Yahweh Shai. The angels, here we have an example of the angels in heaven bowing before Yahweh Shai. Okay, bowing before Yahweh Shai. Let's read on. Having every one of them hops and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Here's your example that shows you that Yahweh Shai makes intercession for us according to the Spirit. This is your example right here. He's the go-between. What does this prove, people? What does this prove, brothers? We are on no level to go to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, directly. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, ain't even listening to us, man. He listens to Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the one that he set up to be the intercessor for us. And Yahweh Shai goes on our behalf. And here's your example right here. Here's Yahweh Shai going before Yahweh who's sitting on the throne, right, with prayers of the saints. Those were the saints that were on, on planet earth, the Israelites that were on planet earth praying for, for more faith, deliverance, what have you, right? Here's Yahweh Shai going before the heavenly father, Yahweh in the spirit world. And who's seen this? The apostle John has seen this and he records it too. Remember Romans 15 and 4, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, right? So we can learn from this. So again, reading on, it says, uh, the eighth verse, and when he had taken the book, and this is why we have the understanding of the book, through Yahweh Shai, who went before the Heavenly Father Yahweh on our behalf. Remember what Yahweh Shai told his disciples, which became apostles. He said, I got to go away and get that comforter. When I go away, I'll send you the comforter. Where's the comforter? The understanding of these scriptures. The Holy Spirit, which gives us the understanding of these scriptures. Okay? And remember, um, uh, the, the apostle John he wept much because he, he 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 didn't he, he saw no one on planet earth could break down these scriptures because the book was sealed. Remember, Elder Pastor Elder Pastor just did a video on that that very subject, talking about the book being sealed. So the book was revealed. The seals were broken through who? Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai went before the Father to get to get the 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 okay, if you will, so that this book could be revealed to us on the planet earth. Yahweh Shai had to go before the Father. This is what we're reading here, okay? Uh, uh, the, the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, meaning you, Yahweh Shai, you are worthy to take, to take this book, which represents this Bible. Why, why is he worthy? Let's keep reading. And to open the seals thereof, to open the seals thereof, meaning reveal the secrets that are in this book. All right. And especially the secrets that we learn now. Uh, where's American prophecy? What's going to happen to America? Who is the wicked? Right. What's going to happen to the wicked? Those were sealed to us at one time. We had no idea about this. Now we do. And guess who we got that information through? Yahweh Shai, who went before the Father Yahweh, the Father Yahweh gave him the okay to give us the information through the Spirit. Okay? <laughs> that was a lot to say. Give us the information through the Spirit. All right? So, oh, man. <laughs> you, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> you got to understand how Yahweh Shai fits in this thing of ours, man. The great role that he plays in this thing of ours. Okay, and you got to give Yahweh Shah his much due respect, and you got to understand that you are on no level to go before the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Why you think Yahweh Shah, and we said that at the camp too, why you think Yahweh Shah said, I am the doorway to the Heavenly Father? Did he not say that? Let's see, let's see if that's not so. Let's, let's go quickly go to that scripture I am the door, and what I'm reading in Revelation, the fifth chapter, is more, even more proof. Of why Yahweh Shai said, I am the door to the Father. And no man can come to the Father but by me. Okay, let's read it. All right. Um, <clears throat> give me a moment here. Okay, let's go to John. I think it begins in, in uh, the book of John 10 and 1. Yeah. Uh, 
John 10 and 1, verily, verily, verily means truly, I say unto you, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. He that entereth not by the door, who's the door? He's referring to himself, into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his sheep, his own sheep by, by name, and leadeth them out. That's Yahweh Shai, right? And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Again, Yahweh Shai is referring to himself. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Yahweh Shai unto them, but they understood not what things they, what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Yahweh Shai unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Okay, he said, he is the door of the sheep. All right, the ninth verse. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai is going to save him. He's, he's part of Yahweh Shai's elect. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Meaning what? Understanding. That's what that means. All right. So Yahweh Shai is the, the, uh, Yahweh Shai is the door to the Father. Okay, Yahweh Shai is the door to the Father. All right, so let's get back to Revelation 5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain. Indeed, Yahweh Shai was slain. He was slain on the cross, right? And has redeemed us to the Heavenly Father by thy blood, the blood that he shed on the cross. And then after three days, Going into the fourth day, he was resurrected by the Father, according to Bible prophecy, right? Uh, thou has redeemed us to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So it's because of Yahweh Shah and the great sacrifice that he did that we even stand a chance of being reconciled back to the Father. And that very word reconciled means to be made a friend again. It literally means to be made a friend again. So now through Yahweh Shai, us Israelite men are now friends to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Remember, he called Abraham his friend. Remember that. So through Yahweh Shai, we are friends of Yahweh. Through Yahweh Shai. But without Yahweh Shai, we're on no level to go before the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. We have to go through the mediator. Okay? Let's read the 10th verse. It has made us unto our power, right, which is Yahweh, kings and priests, so because of Yahweh Shai, we are now made kings and priests unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai. All right, that's the importance of Yahweh Shai in this ministry, in this thing of ours, man. And we shall reign on the earth, you see? So you got a lot of Israelites that don't give Yahweh Shai his due, that don't respect Yahweh Shai like they should, okay? Some of them, they give more attention to the law, statutes, and commandments than they do Yahweh Shai. Okay, so I understand why, as it is written, the slain of the Lord, meaning Yahweh Shai, the slain of Yahweh Shai shall be many. And, and the, the, the killing is going to start with them that know that they're Israelites. The judgment is going to begin with those that know that they're Israelites. A lot of these Israelites are going to fall short of the judgment because they simply do not respect Yahweh Shai like he should be respected. They don't acknowledge Yahweh Shai like he should be acknowledged. And they're going to pay with it. They're going to pay with that with their lives. This is how important you have to understand the importance of Yahweh Shai in this ministry, the, the role that he plays. I mean, this, this whole thing is really, in reality, this whole thing is about Yahweh Shai. In reality, we, as Israelite men, we're trying to emulate Yahweh Shai. We're trying to become just like him because he's the only one right now that have been accepted by the Heavenly Father Yahweh. He's the, as it is written, he's the firstborn of death. Okay, he's the first one to... Go through this shit that we're going through and come up, come out over on the other side. Think about that, man. Okay? So you have to understand the importance of Yahweh Shai. You have to. Okay? If you don't understand the importance of Yahweh Shai, you really don't understand this ministry. You don't. And if you think that you're on the level to go right to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, you, you, you are seriously out of your mind, all right? You're seriously insane. Okay? <laughs> simply put man there's no, there's no other way nice way to put it okay <laughs>
Uh, let's get back to Romans 8, and we're about to wrap this video up, because I made the point, okay? Look look at the subheading here, our victory in Yahweh Shai. That's, that's uh, given to us men, okay? That's a message to us men, and uh, of course, to us, the women, you know, they get, they get saved through us, okay? All right, we are their Lord. All right, that's First Peter, the third chapter, the eighth verse, uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord. Okay, is your example right there. Romans 8 and 26, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. There you go. The, the word pray means to beg. That, another word that comes to mind is supplication. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us. Again, that's Yahweh Shai. He made intercession for us. We just read an example in Revelation, the fifth chapter of intercession. How Yahweh Shai went on behalf of the prayers that, that the saints prayed on the planet Earth. Yahweh Shai took those saints, or took those prayers rather, and went to Yahweh. Okay? Made intercession for us, like we're reading here. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Exactly. Yahweh Shai knows what we're going through because he went through it. All right? All what we're going through in this ministry, how we suffer and we toil, you know, suffering in this ministry until it be accomplished, like he suffered more than 2,000 years ago. He knows exactly what we're going through. And he goes on, on, on our behalf to the Father. All right? To, to, to give us what we need to survive in this ministry. Think about that. Yahweh Shai is the one that does that for us. Okay? A lot of these guys, a lot of these Israelites, don't, they don't acknowledge that. All right? They don't acknowledge that. And you can tell by the way they talk. Oh, Yahweh Shai don't need to be worshipped. They don't understand the capacity of Yahweh Shai in this ministry, in this thing of ours. They really don't. That's why they make statements like that. Okay? Uh, let's keep reading. And he, again, that's Yahweh Shai, that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of Yahweh. Who does that? Yahweh Shai. All right. He makes intercession for us according to the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right. Let's jump down to, let's jump down to, um, Right, the 34th verse, but let's start up here, the 30th verse. Well, let's start at the uh, 29th verse. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be, to be conformed to the image of his son. Again, that's what I said earlier. This whole thing of ours is, is the ability, uh, or rather to gain the ability of emulating Yahweh Shai, to become just like him, right? Who is the image of the, of, uh, the, the you know, the firstborn image of uh, the son of the heavenly father, all right, which is Yahweh, right, <clears throat> the heavenly father Yahweh. Read on, it says, for whom he did foreknow, he, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that we, or that he, rather, might be the firstborn among many brethren. Indeed, that's what Yahweh Shai is. That's why he's, he's got the title, the only begotten son, the first spirit created by the heavenly father Yahweh himself. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also, or them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. This is talking about the elect, the elect of Yahweh Shai. Let's keep reading. It says, What shall we say then to these things? If the heavenly Father be for us, who can be against us? That's true. He that spareth not his own son, but deliver him up for, for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the most the charge of the heavenly father's elect? It is the heavenly father that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Yahweh Shai that died. Yea, rather, that is risen. Listen, listen closely. Listen. Let me read that from the top. Who is he that condemneth? It is Yahweh Shai that died. Yahweh Shai that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Right, because he died, but he's risen again by the Father Yahweh. After three days, going into the fourth day, who is even at the right hand of the heavenly father. How do we know this to be true? Stephen confirmed it because he looked up into the heavens. He saw a vision of the heavenly father, Yahweh, sitting on his throne, and he saw Yahweh Shai standing right next to him. Check that out. So it's Yahweh Shai who's our intercessor, 
sitting or standing right next to the Heavenly Father on his right hand side, right? How powerful is that? It says, it is Yahweh that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, who also maketh intercession for us. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, a lot of these Israelites do not understand what they're involved in. And how do you know? Because the way they talk about Yahweh Shai. They put more emphasis on the law, statutes, and commandments than they do Yahweh Shai. It's not the, the law that maketh intercession for us. Hell no, no way. It's Yahweh Shai himself that make intercession for us, that pleads for us. Let's read that in the NLT. It says, who then will condemn us? Right, who can condemn us? No one, for Yahweh Shai died for us, right, beginning with the elect, Okay, he died for us, right? And was raised to life for us, the elect. The us is the elect, which is talking about us, the hopeful elect. All right? We, we call ourselves the hopeful elect because we're showing humility. We're hoping we're of that number, right? So let's read it again. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Yahweh Shai died for us and was raised to life for us. Absolutely. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand. Come on, man. <laughs> and again, who confirmed that? Stephen, as he was being stoned, confirmed that. He looked into the heavens and he saw Yahweh sitting on his throne and he saw Yahweh Shai standing right next to him on his right hand side. This is who we have pleading for us, okay? Not the law, not the statutes, not the commandments, Yahweh Shai. Okay, like I said, these other Israelite groups, especially the IUIC, they're good for that. Really, do they talk? They don't even call the man by his name. They call him Jesus Christ. But really, do they talk about him being our, being the one to emulate? Okay, they give more attention to the laws, statutes, and commandments than they do Yahweh Shai. They really do. Okay, let's read that again one more time. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Yahweh Shai died for us. That's how precious we are. Yahweh Shai shed his blood for us, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel, right? And was raised to life for us. And he is seated in the place of honor at the Most High's right hand, pleading for us. Come on, man. And you're going to tell me that Yahweh Shai don't deserve his respect? That Yahweh Shai doesn't uh, deserve worship? That we should not worship Yahweh Shai like we worship the Father when this man is pleading for us, all the shit that we're going through being in this ministry. If it were not for Yahweh Shai, we would not we would not be able to deal with it. It'd be impossible. Yahweh Shai is the one that pleads for us, goes to the Heavenly Father Yahweh on our behalf. He's our go-between. He's our intercessor. You see. So hopefully, if you clearly saw that and you were edified by this video. Please drop a line in the comment section. All right. The purpose of this video was to show you the importance of Yahweh Shai, man. The importance of Yahweh Shai. Without him, we could not survive in this ministry. Without him, we couldn't understand these scriptures. Without him, we couldn't teach these scriptures. Okay? You have to understand the capacity that Yahweh Shai, what he means to us in this ministry. Okay? That was the purpose of this video. And hopefully... The understanding got out there. If you feel that it did, please drop a line in the comment section. Add a scripture to what was what was taught in this video. And for now, I'll see you in the next one.